Hi there, Heidi, Anne-Marie and Erica. Three angels, according to Diana, that you treated in the Nimbin Hospital this afternoon. She asked me to do an upload for you, especially to explain what has been going on. She was so impressed by your attentiveness as she was telling you this ripping yarn, this place in history that we are witnessing right now, where of course the world of mainstream is totally ignoring. So I'll put links below this video where you can go yourselves and look at all of the evidence that we have uploaded on a scribbed site of the historic conversation that began with Pope Benedict the 16th when he retired. It began on March the 11th, our time. To begin from the beginning, Diana told you that the Lord Jesus Christ has been on the earth since his rebirth, January 11th, 1944, and he was reborn into Australia. It's all about the migration of bloodlines, and the only way onto the earth for anybody is through the womb. He came as a man the first time through the womb of his mother Mary, and he came as a man once again through the womb of his mother, this time Daphne Golightly, the most royal woman. He is the image in the Shroud of Turin. That's the purpose for the image in the first place. It was his way of leaving his photograph for this time now when technology recognises and can bring to the world the image in the Shroud of Turin. His new name today is Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Golightly on his mother's side, Marshall on his father's side, are the two royal lines from David, the tribe of Judah, and it emigrated to Ireland, England, Scotland, etc. And of course, over the decades since the crucifixion, into Australia, where Golightly and Marshall meet and marry and produce the most royal man on the earth, as you would expect God to be. His name, Brian Lenny Golightly Marshall. So he has left the evidence of himself in the creation. That's what God does. He measures his creation to prove all things, not only about himself, but about events that are happening and have been unfolding for all history. The evidence is out there for everybody to do the research and go and find. So we'll just bring you up to speed with what's going on now. So it's been a life of rejection, crucifixion, his entire 69 years, if you like, until we reach that point in time, which was the 11th of February this year, 2013, when Pope Benedict the 16th announced his retirement. That was the beginning of the nation 1115 and brought us into alignment with Revelation 1115 which roughly goes, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of God and his Christ. So that was with the announcement and then two weeks later the withdrawing of Benedict XVI into retirement. He retired because of ill health, etc., and also because of uh, his downcast soul at what he discovered, the filth operating underneath him in the church. It was too much for this righteous man, um, the heart of a a lion, but a lamb, innocent. So he retired and then uh, fatefully, on the 3rd of March, he actually organized the television cameras to go in and video for the first time in 30 years, the Shroud of Turin. He had always held the Shroud so dear to him and holy and sacred. And so it was appropriate that on the 9th of, Feb um, sorry, the 9th of March, Andrea Anna in Germany, one of our saints and disciples who has been working alongside of us to fight the beast, which has all the power, all the money, all the technology, and owns all of the media to prevent the knowledge of the Christ going out. They know he's here, but they've, they've prevented it. It's their end once the public announcement goes up. Andrea Anna made contact directly with Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI through live emailing. That was breakthrough. She then upon request sent a photograph because the initial reaction was don't waste his time, um, he's not the Christ, yada yada. However, once she, she sent the photograph, which was a comparison of the Christ today right beside the Shroud of Turin, 
the Pope immediately sent back an email, I want to speak to him now. However, we were already asleep. So it was hours later, our time, it was um, Monday morning, the 11th of March, when first connection was made between the Christ and Pope Emeritus Benedict. So that conversation lasted for almost three weeks and we have the evidence of all of it. Everything has been laminated and we have it archived. Where, where are we at today? On the 25th of March, Benedict uploaded to the internet an apostolic letter and it's 11 pages announcing to the world the returned Lord Jesus Christ and how and why he knows and is announcing by a minute go lightly marshal to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Two days before this was uploaded to the net, he interviewed, or not interviewed, but uh, met for the first time with now Pope Francis. They were together an hour and a half. 45 minutes of that was kept secret. No media in there to take the meeting. However, his personal secretaries were there and have photographs of the meeting. And it was during that meeting that Benedict informed Francis that indeed the Lord Jesus Christ had returned in his name today, new name of the Revelation, 3.12 and 19.12, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Well, of course, Francis rejected and he also rejected Vatican III. Vatican III is a 49-point document that very simply overturns all of the evils that have been operating under Vatican II and it places the Vatican Church, which is the church the Christ returns to to take over as, it, as its head, it places the Vatican Church, after cleaning it up of all the foul and filth, as the printer of the money, the currency, for the Catholic people, the mm -hmm. 1.2 billion of them throughout the world. Mm -hmm. It also introduces to the world the Christ health protocols, which means the healing of all diseases, cancers, malaria, diabetes type 2, uh, by simply using the protocols we've already proven in and through Papua New Guinea and Fiji on two occasions. What it does, it overturns the system of the beast. Francis also rejected Vatican III, which meant that he uh, <laughs> he saw immediately there was a, actually his reaction was, I'm not going to even look at this from, from a mere man. The man is arrogant, his show of humility is just a show. It is only skin deep. As it turns out, he is a thug. The Christ warned when the conclave was happening, which by the way is illegitimate, I'll explain that to you in a moment. But the Christ had already warned and said to Pope Emeritus Benedict that whoever walks out of the conclave, a 25 cent bullet would save the world a lot of grief because that Pope would be the biblical antichrist and indeed he has proven himself to be, he has denied the Christ has come in the flesh and has totally opposed himself to the Lamb and um, has locked up Benedict somewhere, cut off all communication with the outside world after his thugs went in on the 3rd of April bursting in to Benedict's office, it was late at night and with an arrest warrant for Father Giuseppe who it was the assistant of Benedict, been with him for years, of the papal household Benedict himself got up to intervene and these thugs punched him, knocked him down onto the ground and the last Father Giuseppe saw of him was on the ground crying with a bleeding ear. This is an 85-year-old man, the Pope, Emeritus Benedict, who has been renamed Peter by the Christ. For indeed, he is the reincarnate of Simon Peter, the brother of Jesus. Moving along from there, Father Giuseppe was removed uh, to the south of Italy. We heard from him yesterday for the first time since April the 3rd. We were very concerned for his welfare. He got through to us. And the conversation that we had is the public record now. It is all on the Scribd site. It is, like everything we do, downloaded and documented laminated. This is the historical record 
of what has been happening. I'll read to you that night. In um, he himself has been under guard 24/7. A dude at the front, a, a detective, police officer at the back, and one living nearby. He describes yesterday in his contact with us what went on. I'll read to you this part because it is shameful. It is disgusting. Now, he said that before he left Rome, Francis called him. This is before he left Rome. And Francis himself Francis himself spoke to Giuseppe and he, he told me that he was disgraced to talk to me on the phone. I said, I am disgraced. You call yourself Pope. So this is the former Father Giuseppe. Of course, he's been stripped of uh, his uh, priesthood and this is before they, they exiled him out and away from Rome. 